Everybody coming to you this morning with an interesting one. Um, the, our goal here is to actually solve uh, this equation right here. And it, when I first looked at this, um, I thought, wait a minute, you have one equation, two unknowns, both X and M are understood to be natural numbers, you know, counting numbers one, two, three, four. And uh, normally when you have one equation and two unknowns, you're gonna, have, you know, you. You're, you may have infinite solutions, like, for example, the line X plus Y equals two. It has an infinite number of solutions and there are the points on the line. Here, though, it turns out there is a unique solution. So let's get busy showing how this, what appears to be impossible statement uh, could actually uh, be true. Now, <clears throat> something that's not particularly common, I, I don't think, it, like in the college level math classes, is talking about parity. You know, and parity just means even or odd. OK, so uh, the proposition here is that uh, if A and B are any, any two integers, that's natural numbers in their negative counterparts and zero, they have the same parity. That is, if A plus B is odd, then A minus B would be odd. If A plus B is even, then A minus B would be even. Now, I, I put together a little proof right here in, in the uh, odd case. Um, I assumed that A plus B was odd. It's very similar proof for uh, if A plus B is even. All right. Now, notice that A minus B, okay, we've assumed that A plus B is an odd number right here, right? An odd number is an even number plus one. Now, A minus B uh, is just equal to A plus B minus 2B, right? That'll give you A minus B. But uh, you also subtract the 2b from this part right here. So you get a 2m minus a 2b plus 1. And then you get two, you get another odd number, right? You get another, another odd number. All right. Notice this holds for the case if m and b are equal to each other. You would just get 1, which is an odd number, right? So it holds for both cases. Now, the, the proof for even is, is similar. Uh, so I'll, I'll admit that. But uh, let, me, let me just give you one concrete example to make sure I'm making sense to you. Um, let's say that, um, oh, let's say that we were talking about, uh, seven plus three right up here. Let's just come right up here. Let's see if we got room here. Seven plus three. Okay. That's definitely an even number, right? But so is seven minus three. They're both even. And you can come up with an example for odd also, but seven plus three is 10, right? That equals to 10. That's certainly an even number, right? And then seven minus three right over here is equal to four. So both 10 and four are even numbers. And you can, you can come up with examples for odd also, but that's what we mean by parity. Now let's go ahead and get busy on the solution to this thing. Again, it looks very strange that you have one equation, two unknowns, and it's gonna have a unique answer. But we do a standard trick here called completing the square. And that involves taking half of eight, half of 16, which is eight, and you square it. So it would be minus eight, but that the, the squaring operation is gonna make it positive, right? So we'll just call that, uh, oh, the Wi-Fi is messing up on me. But y'all, that's eight squared right there. Okay, that's eight squared. And where did I get the eight? Uh, eight is half of 16. And, uh, it, again, the negative doesn't make a difference since you're squaring. Okay, so what we do is we add and subtract zero and we still have its equivalent to the, to the equation here right above. All right, and so what this becomes, this X minus eight squared actually produces this term, this term, and this term, okay? But then we're still left with minus 64 minus 52, which will be the minus 116 you see right here. Again, the minus 116 is um, is the result of minus 64 minus 52. And I hope that makes sense. We just added zero in kind of a clever way here to complete the square. All right. Now, again, it's useful right here to swap the positions of 116 and m squared. That's OK. You still get what we call an equivalent equation. And now, folks, if you'll notice right here, we actually have something. It's in the form of the difference of two squares. Um, A squared uh, minus, God, it makes me sick. This, this Wi-Fi kind of dies, and then it causes this thing to slip. 
but uh, a squared minus b squared is equal to uh, a plus b a plus b times uh, a minus b let me get that if i go past it it doesn't seem to slip okay uh, a minus b all right but notice that that's what kind of helps us here now y'all again notice the parity here they're going to have the same parity these guys are going to have the very same parity if a plus b is odd so is a minus b and if a plus b is even so is a minus b right so you see that comes into play right here because we can rewrite this expression and all this is is just this guy i just recopied this one right so i just brought it down to the next line now again this would be in the form a plus b right here this is a plus b and this is a minus b right your entire a is this object there's your a plus b minus b right all right now um so that comes in super super handy when you take a look at 116 because folks if you take a look at 116 it's only possible um uh, factors are uh this is equal to one times 116 right yeah i hope you that dot there is not very big but that that dot right there is supposed to be times but notice that this is an odd number this is an even number right but this is also equal to two times uh 58. now those are both even numbers which we have to check right But if you continue dividing by two here, you get, this is also equal to four times 29, right? Now that's what makes this so cool. You, this would never work out nicely, you know, where you'd have more than one answer actually, I guess. But notice that this is the only two times that we have the same parity, right? Uh, two times 58, four is an even number, 29 is an odd number, one's an odd number, 116 is an even. But two times 58 fits the bill as far as the parity, even, even, right? So that's why we set up this system right here. You see, this is one factor. This is another factor. And so we break up 116 into 2 and 58. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. And if you would have to check these other cases, but this is odd, even, even, odd right here, right? So you have to ignore those because of that parity, that the parity statement, the parity lemma is super strong. It really helped us here. Now, um, and so the nice thing about this folks, notice that if you just add, remember you can just, when you're solving a system of equations, you can actually just add equals to each other and the M's cancel nicely here. And so when you add these two guys together, you get two X minus 16, you add two and 58, you get 60, right? And then uh, it, it follows immediately that X is equal to 38. Now, notice we never really had to find M. And I actually, I didn't, I wasn't explicit with my instructions, but if you did want to find uh, M, we've already, we just found X, right? If you do the arithmetic on this one, folks, uh, and I'll, I'll just write it right down here. Uh, I'll come right down. You get 38 squared. Okay, in the name of time, I'll just write down the result. You get 38 squared uh, minus uh, 16, 16 times 38. Y'all, all I'm doing is taking this 38. I'm taking this 38 and subbing it right here and right here. Okay, minus 52. Now, it turns out I'm just doing the arithmetic for you in the name of keeping the video relatively short and getting out of here, you know, but th this is equal to 28 squared, it turns out. OK, so we are talking about solving just natural number solutions here. And that's the only solution, folks. So uh, that, that's quite notice. We again, I hate to go off, but we, we could ignore these two factorizations. Now, if this number had a lot of different factorizations. And some of them were odd together, some of them were even together. We'd have to check every single one of them, and this would have multiple solutions. But in this case, we do have the unique solution uh, x equals to 38, all right? And then uh, m 
m equals to 28. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed. I like that. And I think there's some other interesting things we can do with the parity here.